Hey, this is Mike and Tom with the Muscle and Speed Podcast. We're here to talk about our favorite car movies, TV shows, music, and workouts, wheeling, whatever else comes to our mind. We're going to be posting these up once a week. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube at Muscle and Speed. We also have a website, www.muscleandspeed.com, where we'll eventually be selling some merch. Our goal here is to share our passion for all these things with the people who feel the same way. And we're back. All right. It's been since what, right. November? Good Lord, yeah. It's been a long uh, time. Yeah, my only regret right now is that we don't have Tommy with us. Yeah, we don't have Tommy. So that kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? No, happy we'll get him in next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell I, us how I he's do, coming along I, with that 69 Mach 1. Well, I thought it was all done. I thought he put that. I thought that was in there for years, getting redone. Oh, it it's a beautiful car. It's in basically perfect condition. He's got a uh, rear brake issue. He needs to figure out, and um, the synchros are a little out of shape on his shifter. His shift from second to third is a little notchy, and uh, he just basically he has to rev match right now to get it in. But did he keep it all original? Oh, yeah. It's a 1969 Mach 1, yellow, with black interior, 351 Windsor, four-speed manual, completely original. He's got some Magnum 500 wheels. I think that's the only thing he added. Do you you remember I got to ride in that car? Yeah. It's an amazing car. I love going for rides in that car. And we got pulled over. Oh, you did? Yeah. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. We go like a quarter mile down the road, and he turned out on that little dirt turnout from the from the big house, and a state trooper pulled us over and knew who he was and let us go. And that <laughs> was awesome. <laughs> that's a little home cooking right there. Yeah, yeah, that's the <laughs> yeah when um, Sean Tysto took me out in his '72 Chevelle, we were buzzing around Lance, and it was the first time he had out in quite a while. Um, and, uh, the state police pulled us over twice in like five minutes. (laughs) We were headed up the hill just past the grocery store there. And, uh, he chirped him. He did a little bit of a burnout in first and chirped him going into second. We got pulled over instantly. They let us go. He whipped it around. We went back up and we were going up the hill, the other side, going out of town, pulled us over again and said his taillight was out. Let him go both times, though. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, there's he's probably got some really interesting stories about his yeah. uh, accidents he's had, yeah. Well, not just accidents, but uh, he did a lot of street racing around here back in the day. Did you he? Know, his, his Chevelle was out and about a lot. Well, when did he get that? He got that when he was like 16, didn't he? 16 15. Or 17? He got that from his grandpa when he was 15. Wow. It would be worth having him on here to talk about it. I mean, Sean's a nope. is an interesting dude. <laughs> He's a character, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's Mother's Day. Mother's Day, um, one of the best moms in the world. So you I and did. I were just talking about the last trip you and me and Ma took together. We went to pick up that 2005 Mustang GT, and that was back in 2010. And I thought you would have that forever. <laughs> you know did. what? People still talk about that car. <laughs> <laughs> when we post this podcast up, I'll post some pictures of the car, but from us going to pick it up. I have a picture of you in it, and I have a picture of mom in it yeah. um, with that car. Um, it was a great car. Uh, it was a 2005 Mustang GT. When I bought it, it had 60,000 miles on it. Um, it was a stone stock, bullet wheeled. Um, basically, it just had a cat back on it. And to this day, I don't know what cat back it had on it, but that sounded amazing, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> That's one of the funnest rides I've had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you drove it for a while on the way back. I did. 
I did. I enjoyed every minute of it because that was, I think that was the first time that I really actually got to drive a muscle car anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, a ride. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I had offered, you know, I let our cousins drive it. I let a lot of people drive that car. And the reason was, you know, it had 300 horsepower or whatever. Um, at the end, I think it had a cat back. I had a tune on it. Um, and I had replaced the coil packs with some, um, and a cold air kit. So, um, maybe it had 320 horsepower. Maybe it was something like that. Um, but that was a decent amount of power and it was an automatic. And so it wasn't tough to drive. And I told everybody like, well, I don't know if I want to drive that. I'm like, if you can't drive this, you can't drive anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You need yeah, to turn your I license in. I had a problem with that, you know, when, you know, driving, I wasn't even nervous riding in that car. That no. was, that was fun. Yeah. Well, mom drove it, uh, on the highway. Yeah, she did. Coming back from Clio, Michigan, where we bought it. Um, I traded in my, what was it? A 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix GT. Yeah. <laughs> That was a nice little car, but uh, the Mustang was a huge improvement. (laughs) And it was a deal you almost didn't do. Yeah, I almost didn't. They were uh, really lowballing me on the trade in. Yeah. Well, that's. But in the end, I just bit the. I just did it. I was like, now I I came here to get this car. Um, They're close on money, so I'm just going to go for it. But that's what they do, anyways. It is. That's how they make their money. Yeah, you've got to take it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was so funny. Remember, uh, we we're driving up past West Branch on I-75, and we we're getting passed by everybody and their mother because I let mom drive. <laughs> yeah, many fans and all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Honestly, when I talked to Jules, my wife, when I talked to Jules about that, I told her that was probably the last car I'd ever buy, muscle car wise, which turned out to be a huge lie. but you know at the time that's how i felt it really was i mean that car it was black it had a hood scoop um i customized the crap out of it i put a brushed aluminum dash in it i added a leather steering wheel i added a leather interior brushed aluminum pedals i added the uh the uh upgraded door sill plates i mean i did everything i could to that car i added those um the California special wheels from 2011 and 2012. I did everything I could think of. I added Roush springs and, uh, shocks and struts. So I upgraded the suspension and, um, you know, I, I had everything I thought for that car and it was amazing. And th- that's the big question is what happened? <laughs> I mean, that A lot was, of things. It just wasn't the one. Right? One is I'm forever one. impatient. Um, and I'm forever looking at things. I never stop looking. If I bought a car tomorrow, the very next day I'd be looking at used cars. <laughs> well, I've, I've had to abstain from looking at used cars and looking at Camaros because it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while for me looking, looking for cars to buy. Cause I really, I really want to do something with mine. This well, you're kind of in the same boat though. Your Camaro is perfect. It doesn't need anything. You can drive that to California tomorrow yeah. if you need to. I could. It's got low enough miles on it. I... Yeah. So it's kind of the same question. If you were to get rid of it, what would be the reason? I know what 19... it was for my Mustang, and I'll get to that in a minute. Well, wait a second, though, because it's the 1980 Z28 T-Top, 350. Yeah. That's what I want next. But I want to upgrade from that to the to even earlier to the split bumper. But it's kind of like... It's kind of like taking steps back in time, but this this one that I have, I really want to do something with it. I want to make it something all original, no uh, no cheap parts, no off brands. I want everything General Motors. That that's what I want with this one. That's my big. That's my. I don't I don't want to let this car go like I have the four other Camaros that I've let go without doing something to it. Yeah. Well, I drove it. And it rides great. I mean, 
here's the thing. It's an 87 IROC, right? 32 years old, yeah. Yeah, it's an 87 IROC. It's in great condition, and it drives like an 87 IROC. Now, I don't mean that as a bad thing. I mean that as you have to know what that is when you get into it. It has a stiff ride. Yeah. It turns sharp. You know, so if that's what you're looking for, that's what you're going to get. You know, you don't get into it. You get in my Cutlass, <laughs> that 72 Cutlass, that thing's like floating on clouds. Meaning it has no handling at all. <laughs> that body rolls. It it acts like it might roll over onto its roof, turning a corner sometimes. <laughs> well, I, I believe I believe that once you get back into the era, the era of your of your muscle car, that you're getting better. I think the further you go back, up until a certain point, you're getting a better muscle car than what you had before, and that's what that's what I've always wanted. You know, but of course, it, well, it's hard to find. Here's what happened. Um, and, you know, I had the 2014 uh, Challenger SRT8 up until the last fall. Yeah. Modern muscle cars are amazing, and they're better than anything performance-wise that's ever come before. My 05 Mustang GT with the modifications it had, I would have had no problem running it up against most muscle cars from the golden era. Well, we'll call it the golden era, the 60s and 70s. Um, that doesn't mean it's better. It just means it performs better. It stops better. It turns better. It accelerates better. Um, that SRT8, I would have put that up against anything from that era. That's a really, I mean, it's a 500 horsepower car, modern horsepower. That's crazy fast. That doesn't make it better. Um, the Challenger was, in my opinion of the modern muscle car, the Challenger is the best looking. And it's the most comfortable for me. I'm 6'2", 280 pounds. It's the most comfortable for me to ride in, which is a big factor in, in me getting it. Um, but... They're just even even with the Challenger, which is the most authentic muscle car of the modern era. It is. There's still something missing. And there's something when you get in a 72 Cutlass or even an 87 IROC or a 69 Mustang, you're not going to feel that in a modern car. You're not going to sense it the way they feel, the way they smell, the way they do. You can say easily, you can say it does everything worse. And you're right. It turns worse. It stops worse. It it does everything worse. It's slower. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's how the car makes you feel. And ultimately, yeah. what I decided oh, was that 72 Cutlass was more important to me than that 500 horsepower 2014 SRT8 Challenger <laughs> yep. with a six-speed manual and every option. That was as cool as a modern muscle car to me could get outside of a Hellcat or a GT350 or a ZL1 Camaro. I mean, those are the pinnacle, but would it be really better? I mean, you're faster, you're more powerful, you can stop better, you can turn better, you can do all these other things better. But when you're driving it, is it better? Do you feel better? Are you more engaged? Are you smiling bigger? I don't know. Well, here's I what like I the stuff. When when I took uh, Cody had our nephew Cody had rode in a couple of my cars. Yeah. O older ones that were 30 years old, and then and then one that wasn't so old. And he told me the difference to him. He said is the the newer Camaros and the newer Mustangs seem to him to be sports cars and not muscle cars. So is that the big difference? Is that you know, between a muscle car, a real steel car, and and a sports car, I mean, what do you consider it to be? Do you do you consider it because because they classify? Yeah, um, sports cars to me are handlers, right? So yeah, I w I actually I agree with that. Um, the Mustang and the Camaro handle like world class sports cars. I mean. Um, you go back as far as 2012, the Boss 302, which was still a solid axle Mustang, beat the M3 on pretty much 
one of the well not to say pretty much but the willow springs um race course out in california uh, the boss 302 beat it that was a huge deal because the m3 is probably the best handling bmw they have um and that's a european sports car pure sports car that is the major european um sports car so for the boss 302 to come in and do that was a big deal now chevy turned around and released the camaro ss 1le with magnetic ride control and smoked the boss 302 i mean flat out smoked it so yeah i mean those two were were uh have have evolved into sports cars you look at the uh the shelby gt350 that's a sports car i mean it's kind of a muscle car but you look at that flat plane crank the fact that it revs to 8000 rpm or whatever it look at the way it handles the tires the sus- the suspension the setup on it it's a mustang but that's a mustang that's meant to beat most hundred thousand dollar cars on a road yep. course so um it, it's crazy the zl11 le you look at it, it i mean it, it will flat out kill a lot of supercars you know it's 650 horsepower with that kind of handling and it will flat out kill supercars you know uh, so yeah that. To me, they have kind of bled over into being sports cars. Now, the Challenger has not. So, I don't know how you feel about the Challenger versus the Mustang versus the Camaro versus the... I know that's still a brand, there's still a brand war that goes on, and I love it. I really do. In fact, my last post to Muscle and Speed today was Mustang, Challenger, Camaro. And I said, I don't care which one you have. I don't care what brand loyalty you have. Just drive them. And that is how yeah. I feel. Um, and I know you feel the same way. Um, but the Challenger to me is that Boulevard Bruiser. It is the true GT car. I don't care what trim level you have, whether you have an uh, SXT, a GT, an RT, an SRT, a uh, Scat Pack, or... Uh, a Hellcat or a Hellcat Red Eye or a Demon. <laughs> that's all the that's all the challengers. I don't care which one you have. It is the ultimate GT car. It is the ultimate Boulevard Bruiser. I'm going to call it a cruiser. It's a Boulevard Bruiser <laughs> with that Hemi torque. Um, they're a blast, and that's what they're meant to do. And they are so comfortable to ride in. You know, they fill See? that niche. They are their own thing. So, you know, I think it's hilarious. People are like, well, the SS1 LE will destroy it on a road course. Well, hell yeah, it will. <laughs> 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 it will absolutely crush it. We're all in agreement there, I think. I don't know anybody's going to try to argue that point. <laughs> but at the same time... um, that's not what the challenger is you know and i know that you can get versions of the camaro that are also faster in a straight line or at least very similar that's not the point (laughs) no and i know you feel that way too no yeah well just it it made it made me think you know when 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 he said it out loud that this he was like uncle bill this is not this is not a muscle car he said, that's the one thing I don't like about it. He's like, you, you've had muscle cars before. This is not a muscle car. And and that's why I went back to the IROC. That's one of the biggest reasons why. Because I, I knew that it wasn't going to satisfy my need for what I wanted in a car. And what I really want is a classic muscle car. I'm not interested in having a sports car. Right. Well, and I got and I went I, back to the Cutlass. Yeah. You know, um, the Challenger, if you're looking at a car, the Challenger is a better car in every way than the Cutlass. Except that there's a certain feel and a certain nostalgia and just a certain, I don't know. It's it's just, it's an extra thing. It's just an extra thing behind the wheel. It's a way you feel driving oh. it. 
Um, the Cutlass makes me a little nervous because <laughs> I know the brakes don't work as well as they did on the Challenger. <laughs> it doesn't handle as well as the Challenger, so it makes me a little nervous there. Um, I've had a short that I've been dealing with and chasing and trying to find forever now. I seem to have it locked down. The challenge the, or the cutlass seems to start and go whenever I need it to now, which is great. <laughs> For those of you that follow us, you see that um, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, or Twitter, we have uh, I put the the original style cutlass rallies on there. Um, that was a choice. I was looking at Craigers or uh, some other aftermarket wheels to go to a bigger size and maybe give it a little bit of a pro street or drag look. <clears throat> um, I came across some 72 uh, 15 by 7 uh, Cutlass Rallies, and it was just a fit. They were the right color. They were the right size. Oh, that looks um, beautiful. The guy was coming my way within the next day, and I just I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, Thank this you. is it. <laughs> We're getting these. <laughs> Meant to be, yeah. Well, you know, it looks um, better anyways. Yeah. They look good on there. Um, I really like them. And um, I guess that's ultimately what matters is the person paying the bills has got to like what they're doing. Yeah. But they're great. Um, but I kind of feel that way about your Camaro. Um, I know you're looking at different things to do to it. I drove it. It's got plenty of power, you know, for an 87 IROC. It's got the right amount of power. It, it uh, I know some people call that blasphemy. Like, you can never have too much power. Yeah, you could throw a 383 stroker in there, and you could, uh, you know, you could put a little bit more tire under it. Uh, but why? Uh, you know, if that's what you want to do, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess it, it's up to the owner. But uh, and I, you can do that I'm going to I like I like things to be the way that they're supposed to be. Yeah. I don't I don't care about putting too much horsepower into into if it, if it's a real muscle car and you really care about it. I mean, and that's the way I feel about this '87 I Rock is is that it it needs to stay the way it was. If it can run the way it was when it came off the lot, that's what I would like to see. Yeah. Well, and prior to 2010, maybe 2009. Well, let's go back to the GT500 when it debuted again in 2007. You're talking about before 2007. The 60s and 70s muscle cars were the pinnacle of performance still. You know, a factory Camaro or Mustang from the 80s and 90s was not as powerful as a big block name. No. It just wasn't. No. Um, now that doesn't mean that they had gobs of power. I mean, some of them did, but they were the really rare ones, the Copo Camaros or... Um, the special order Mustangs with the sock motor, you know, those things had crazy amounts of power. You had a 428 Cobra jet, you know, they had crazy amounts of power. Um, they were mainly limited by their suspensions and their tires. Um, now pr after 2009 or 2007, the GT 500 came out with 500 horsepower. I'm telling you right now, that 07 Mustang GT500 Shelby will beat the ever-loving crap out of your favorite 60s muscle car <laughs> 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 and not leave anything else. There'd be nothing left to debate. There'd be nothing to talk about. It would just destroy it. Stopping, <laughs> turning, accelerating, comfort, connectivity, uh, every possible metric. It would utterly destroy it. Um, same thing with the Camaro when it came back. You had the ZL1 Camaro when that came back. 580 horsepower. Forget it. It's crazy. None of those yep. old cars can compete with that. That's not what it was about, though. But it's not the same thing as when you feel like when you get into your car and you feel like that you step back in time a little bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, and there's a little sketchiness to it, isn't there? So <laughs> a little, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. You know? right. <laughs> what's funny is a car can feel faster without being faster. Yeah. Right. So my cutlass, which has a shift kit, it's got some work done to that turbo 350 transmission. You drop it down into first and accelerate. It'll hold that gear and it, it launches much harder from first. 
you hit second and it chirps after you've done a little burnout in first it chirps going into second you hit drive now in the same amount of time that challenger is bus lengths ahead of it <laughs> they wouldn't even yeah. be in the same zip code anymore no. but that no. cutlass feels fast it really does it blows me away every time i look down at the speedometer i'm like holy crap i'm doing 75 miles an hour <laughs> <laughs> 75 80 miles an hour it feels fast it doesn't matter if it's not technically as fast as this that or the other thing it felt fast to me when i did it it's like a brain train <laughs> you know my heart was still pumping i still had a big smile on my face <laughs> that's what matters you know i think uh especially on the internet guys get way too caught up into you know, this is technically faster than that. Who cares? The upgrade. Get the one that blows your hair back. <laughs> uh, I see, that, and I see a lot. I see a lot about the 383 in yeah. Camaros. A lot of people like nobody can beat this car. This car is unbeatable. You know, the horsepower and the, and, and, it's, and it doesn't really it doesn't really matter to me. You know, hearing yeah. that stuff doesn't it doesn't phase me when it comes to you know a muscle car. It depends on what it looks like. It, like you said, everybody has their favorite. Yeah, everybody has what they're looking for, and it shouldn't. It you know that that part, the speed and stuff, doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. So going back to that 05 Mustang when we picked that up, you know, we drove down to Clio. Um, remember, we took it for a test drive. We took it over to that parking lot. It was an empty parking lot just north of Flint. Um, we got out. We took pictures. We checked it out. I kind of knew right there, you know, we hadn't gone back and done the final negotiation, but I kind of knew right there we were going to buy it. And so the pictures yeah. I post later uh, of Ma and you in the driver's seat, I kind of knew right there that car was coming home with me. <laughs> it, it just was. And um, I'm really happy to say that the guy who bought it from me, he, uh, two years ago at least, I seen him in the muscle car parade at in Escanaba and I seen him he didn't have the car in the car show itself but he was parked there and so we got some pictures of Jordan with the car um at the car show which was pretty cool um I wish that uh I'd had a little bit more time to do stuff with that car or, or at least talk to the new owner some more because he's done some work to it but it looks fantastic and it looks essentially like it did when I sold it to him um, it's a great car. Well, it's, it's almost like car. you finished it. You know, you came because it came, it came a long way from what it was when you first bought it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that was, that was honestly the, the first, uh, real, real, uh, um, muscle car that I'd driven ever. Yeah. And I rode, I rode near 68 Mustang and that was fun. <laughs> that was yeah. fun. That was fun. I've always got my eye out for that one just in case I find it again. <laughs> it could happen. You, <laughs> you put a know. lot of work in it too. Yeah. Um, but I, w I would. I would make a real effort to buy that car if it came up for sale again. Um, not saying I'd be able to get it, but you never know. I would, I would really try. I would. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, we had a blast doing that. We drove it back up to, uh, back up to Gaylord. Um, I let dad take it for a ride. I remember that. <laughs> he took yeah, mom he for a ride. Excited. Um, when we got it back there, his neighbors came out and were checking it out. It was just one of those cars. You know what I mean? That everybody kind of, uh, paid a little bit of attention to when it was around. Um, I like that about it. It drew attention, you know, and, that, and that's a little bit a part of the car hobby. Um, you pull up to a gas station in a cool car and people take notice. It's a little bit of a sense of pride, you yeah. know, um, obviously some cars do so more than others. Um, but yeah, I like that. I like when I pull up to get gas in the cutlass and, you know, people ask me questions about it. Take notice. Yeah. Yeah. The I gas like station is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't wish think I could get my son more involved. <laughs> well, I don't think there's been maybe maybe two times out of the over a dozen times I've taken the IROC out where I haven't gotten a comment. 
from somebody. And it yeah. doesn't matter whether it's a grocery store or a gas station. Somebody's always telling me. I even had an offer. Somebody wanted to buy it. Not too <laughs> <long ago. laughs> yeah, it's fun. Well, it's tough, you know, and I, and I know similar to me, if I had all the money in the world, would I have my 72 Cutlass? I probably would, but I would have another car or two. You know what I mean? And I think you're in the same boat. If you had all the money in the world, you might still have that car, but it's not the only car you'd have. No. <laughs> um, for me, you know, my love of cars – not just from when we were kids, you know, and uh, Grandpa Mel got Diane that uh, 70 uh, Monte Carlo. Remember that? Yeah. Yep. Cool car. Um, very cool. You know, when we were kids in Gaylord and Mancelona and Dad had that uh, 69 Charger, dark Charger. green, black vinyl roof. Um, those are things you don't forget, or at least I don't. Um, oh. I think Angie was going 90 miles an hour, our sister. <laughs> she loved that car. No seat belts. Yeah. No seat belts. You don't need them. Yeah, it was um, fun. But those are the kind of things you remember, you know. And so I hope on some level, because he hasn't shown a ton of interest yet. I mean, he kind of does here or there. Um, I hope that some of this is rubbing off on my son, you know. And I know you feel the same way with your kids. Same way. You know, yeah. I've just got the one. You've got three. <laughs> but, gonna... you know, you hope one of them or more of them or all of them even will pick up on this. That this they isn't do... the I... end. You know what yeah. I mean? Kids these days, they have everything. They've got these video game systems and these smartphones and social media and all this other crap in their life that draws their attention. You know, we could have a an hour long conversation about how it affects high school sports and <laughs> all these other things, but it's true. And the car hobbies in is even a smaller sector of that. And so, you know, for the people who listen to this podcast, if you know, I don't care if it's your kids, your, your kids, your nephews, your grandkids or neighbors, you know, if, if someone shows an interest in this, show them, take them for yeah. a ride. Pop the hood. Explain your car to them. You know, if they're just, if the interest dies, the industry goes away, all of it ends. Yeah. You know, and, you know, for our local sports teams, I see it. We've gone to eight man football teams. You know, it's just the interest in the, um, the attendance to sporting events and sports in general is just in the toilet. And, you know, the car hobby, it's going to face the same things. Yeah. You know, I, that's why when I looked at muscle and speed initially, I was looking at Jeeps because my wife's into Jeeps. I was looking at uh, jacked up four wheel drive pickups and I was looking at muscle cars. Now, we've kind of gravitated towards muscle cars, both modern but mostly classic, just based on how, how people's reaction to it. However, when I look at that stuff, I see us all as the same crowd. So I don't really care what you're into. You know, I don't really follow the, the, um, the import group. <laughs> You know, I'm not really into the hopped up Civics and uh, even the Toyota Supras and some of the crazy fast cars that you can get and build um, overseas. That's not a knock on them. It's just not what I'm into. You know, I don't understand them. I, I don't. Um, I know they work the same. You know, it, it's air, fuel and spark. I don't care what you own. <laughs> If it's a gas fed engine, it's uh they all work the same basically. Um but yeah, you know, if you if you got kids around you that are even a little interested, show them. Take them for a ride. Do a burnout. Yeah. <laughs> show them I what was, that is. I was just showing going over the uh um different things you can do for an engine with William just like uh 2 days ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, I had him in the garage, had the hood open, was showing him everything, you know, that that I could that I could point out and and explain. Yeah. Just so that he would have some kind of reference because I'm I'm hoping that he'll have an interest in it. I'm yeah. Hoping, I do. Well, and and for you and I especially, I know music plays a strong part. It's not just our yeah. memory of the cars themselves, but it's the music that goes along with it. You know, it's a it's a big deal. Yeah. And so um, it's something that I share with Jordan, and it's one of the times that I feel like I connect, you know, is showing him that in regards to, um, you know, whether it is, whatever it is, Metallica, ACDC, you know, some of the music that he likes um to show him even some of the old uh music videos sometimes there's a muscle car in the video <laughs> yeah which is kind of cool you know and, and and it does increase his enjoyment of it sometimes you know um like any teenage boy uh he's largely concerned with how women react to it <laughs> yeah you know, that always plays a factor. I don't care who your kid is or what they're into. You know, um, the attention level that you get with a muscle car from everybody plays a factor. Yeah. You know, yeah, it does. Um, but I, uh, I don't know. You know, I've, uh, I had a short in the, in the cutlass. I couldn't figure it out the past two years. Last year, I was monkeying around with the starter and the wiring to the starter, and I had it hooked up to a uh, charger, a battery tender. And <laughs> I was trying to get it started last fall, and it started smoking. The wiring next to the starter started smoking really bad. And so I shut it off, and I disconnected everything, and I just pushed it into the garage because I was putting it away for the winter anyway. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to put it away. No big deal. Well, guess what? I put a battery tinder on it this spring, got it all charged up, and it has started with zero problems ever since. <laughs> what happened? Hey. I have no idea. But now it's it works. True. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just have to take the win, right? <laughs> yeah. It would help, though, to know exactly what that was from. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have no idea, but it works. Yeah, and that's what it matters. It runs great now. <laughs> so I don't know. I, obviously, that means that the short could also rear its ugly head at any time. <laughs> so it's making me a little cautious at the same time. But um, I'm really happy that it's working right well, now. Well, so you brought up an interesting point about the music. And one of these times, we're going to have to have a, a show going over some of the best you know, music that you can listen to in different era cars to make you feel a certain way. It's all about nostalgia. It is. You know, it's all about the way you feel when you sit down and turn it over, the way the engine sounds. You know, it's, it's awesome. It's an amazing feeling. I agree. I agree. And, um, yeah, it's, it is different, you know. If I'm listening to "Slow Ride" by Foghat in my '72 versus, uh, I don't know if I was talking to you earlier, but "Pour Some Sugar on Me" by Def Leppard, yeah. you know, in your iRock, or you know, uh, I don't know what in a newer one, um, "Cyanide" <laughs> by Metallica and Death Mag off their Death Magnetic album. Just because I went and saw them live in concert when that album came out. And so uh, it's kind of a pump-up song for me. I really like it. I know that's not one of their more pal popular albums, but I experienced it live, and um, now it resonates with me. <laughs> that's just it's, how it goes. It's awesome. it's awesome groups like that, though, that stick together. Like, for me, it's the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They've yeah. been together since the early 80s. So you can, you know, you can pick your, your decade of music to whatever your, your car is now, and they're still making albums, just like Metallica. Yeah. And that's awesome. You made those um, Red Hot Chili Pepper CDs for me a long time ago. Well, 
um, Jordan kind of dug out my CD collection the other day, and so I bought him a boombox over the weekend. And he's been jamming in his room to all my old CDs <laughs> the past uh, couple days. So um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, of course, is is in there as well as uh, Pearl Jam that you had made for me. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I'm a 90s child, so uh, I'm a big That's Pearl stupid. Jam fan anyway. But um, They're still, still going. Yeah. Still touring, still making albums. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, um, but I kind of had some things I want to talk about in, in, I feel like we talked about the 05 Mustang. We talked about, you know, kind of covered all that stuff, but I wanted to get back to, uh, mother's day and mom. And, uh, one of the cars that I've not been, I don't feel a personal connection to outside of the stories. You know, because our dad grew up in the 50s and 60s, and so his stories of muscle cars are authentic, right? They're the, they're yeah. during the time. And so yep. um, I'm just going to name a few off the top of my head. I know he had a 58 Chevy Del Rey. It was an Oakland County Pursuit car. Um, very fast. He had a 65 Chevy Impala, Evening Orchid with a 327. He had... A 69 Mustang uh, after that. And then, of course, when we were kids, he had this uh, 69 uh, Charger. So um, he may have had more than that, but those are the ones that I remember him talking about. And when he met our mom, he had the 65 Impala. Evening Orchid, black interior, 327. Uh, the rally wheels. It was the first brand new car he'd ever purchased in his life. Um, and he was 20 years old. <laughs> and he was in the yeah, military think, at the time. That's pretty cool. He inadvertently slipped that into our blood because, you know, <laughs> he he didn't really, you could tell he still had a love for those kind of cars, but I, I don't remember him talking about them a whole lot yeah. when we were young. You know, it's it's just something I think that that uh, is just um, carried on to our generation, and hopefully to our kids, that yeah. it'll keep on. Yeah. Well, and you remember uh, beyond the the '69 Charger, which um, he only had that for a little while, um, and part of it I think was Angie's driving, <laughs> our sister <laughs> made him get rid of it. Thanks, Ange. But um, <laughs> that was a cool car. Um, but also, uh, one of my fondest memories growing up was of Diane's 70 Monte Carlo. And you and me and Dad going down to St. John's for a drive in that car. And you remember, coming out of St. John's, there, there used to be that stoplight. It was right on the highway, right on 127. And um, we pulled up and another car, and I don't even remember what kind of car it was. It wasn't any kind of muscle car, but Dad stomped on it anyway. Did a little bit of a burnout and just peeled away from uh, the the intersection. And I had such a thrill from that. <laughs> now, to paint a picture, that 70 Monte Carlo was in fantastic condition. It had a white vinyl top. It had Corvette rally wheels. Um at a 350 it was just a nice car I mean, it wasn't hopped up there was nothing necessarily special about it it was blue with a blue interior and a white vinyl top fantastic yeah, though yeah. and um that's one of those memories that just it gets seared into your brain as a kid and um you know those are the kind of things uh you know I, it makes me wonder you know 20 years from now what are jordan's memories going to be how many of those kind of stories does he have about me? <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> that he might tell lot. about his kid, you know, tell his kids someday, you know. Yeah. Um, cuz I've had my share of muscle cars too. Um, and you know, and I've still got one and I truly believe I will always have at least one, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> or one and I'm trying to buy the other one and Julie's trying to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> um 
you know, it's just, I don't know. It, it's just been in me ever since I was a kid to get mine, you know, to have one, to be able to do that, you know, and, and, um, and I know some kids and some guys in the car hobby, it's big to them to be able to drag race and have the fastest car. It's never necessarily been about that to me. You know, everyone who asks me, I always say is like, I just want to be able to do a good burnout. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to do a good burnout and cruise around. I don't really care if I can't do uh 10 seconds in the quarter, you know, that's, that doesn't matter. Maybe someday it would. And I, and I've thought about it. You know, what's the cheapest way? Take a Fox body Mustang, put a V8 in it, put some nitrous on it and, and go, you know, you can get there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's important to me. You can also waste a lot of money doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And there, there are limits to my wife's patience. So, um, I don't want to take it too far either, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm more about the cruiser, and maybe that's why I gravitated ultimately towards the Challenger is because, um, to me, that is the ultimate cruiser. It's a big, comfortable car with lots of power. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> you know, um, the Camaro and Mustang are both great cars. Don't get me wrong. You know, we're going to San Diego next month for vacation, and – I'm thinking about renting a Camaro convertible just because I've never had one <laughs> just to try it out. Take it for a ride, cruise the coast. Perfect scenario, right? Yeah. And see how it goes. <laughs> see if I fall in love with them. Who knows? Um, if we do, of course we'll throw pictures up and stuff and account on muscle and speed. I'm kind of feeling all this out. You know, you wrote an article for the for the website and for uh, for our social media, and we shared that. Um, it was fairly well received. Um, I think we'll continue to do stuff like that. I just, I don't know. Basically, like I said, we started out. At first, I was sharing stuff uh, of me and the family hitting the gym. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done that, but... For a while, that I was doing that too. You know, we were sharing our our times at the gym. We were sharing uh, off roading stuff. We were sharing motorcycle stuff. We were sharing, and I've basically pared it down as I've gotten feedback. You know, and, and so we don't do too much motorcycle stuff anymore. We don't do too much four wheel drive stuff anymore. Um, it's just because there wasn't a strong reaction to it, and the best reactions we've gotten are to our muscle car stuff. And so I've kind of followed that line. Now, um, we're at a point now with muscle and speed where I've gotten um, our EIN for running the business. I've gotten um, some official things in place to uh, possibly begin licensing and manufacturing our own merchandise. I don't know. You know, I don't know if I want to make that leap. I don't know if I want to put that kind of pressure on the hobby that I've that we have. But at the same time, it would be kind of cool. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing, though, too, is is uh, you know how comfortable you are with it. Right. Do you want to keep it? Do you want to keep it simple? Do you, you know, because it's going to complicate things a little bit. It will, yeah. but it would it could also be really fun. You know. Well, and, and I'm going to bounce this off you right here on the podcast. So one of the things I've talked about doing is one is flipping cars, not flipping cars, but um, getting muscle cars, putting a little money into them and then reselling them. I guess it's kind of flipping cars. It's flipping cars. So one of the things I've thought about doing is that. Not a yeah, ton, not? maybe five, six cars a year. Some to but that you, extent. You, you've had experience in it. You've yeah. done some works on some, on, on some beautiful cars. You've made it, you've made them look better, run better, perform better, more horsepower, and and why not? You know, yeah. if, if it's something that doesn't bother you, it doesn't stress you out, it's something that you like to do, I think it could be good. So here's the last part of it. So beyond that, one of the things I'm thinking about doing is having a raffle. Now I can't decide should we do a raffle car? With a cash alternative, as other places do, 
So say there's a 70 Chevelle SS or 30,000 in cash for um, five, six dollars a month, uh, gives you five tickets or every five dollars you spend in the store gives you another ticket um, in the raffle. Or would it be cooler to have pick a year of car let's say it's a 67 you have a 67 fairlane a 67 chevelle and a 67 uh dodge cornet and you offer those up and let the winner choose and you pay the taxes on it for them i don't know what's the best way forward as far as that goes but that's kind of out there in the ether as something to do you know i would love to turn muscle and speed into a full-time job um, and so for those of you who have followed us on our podcast and know that it's been months since we've released one, <laughs> it's because I just, I have so much that comes up sometimes in my personal life and, and I have other things going on and it's hard for me to get back into the mold of doing this every week. You know, I don't have a staff. It's me, it's Will, it's Tommy. And we record, and then when it's done, I go through and I check the audio, I get everything put together, and then I upload it. Um, that's it. <laughs> it's like when I published my book. I was asked, like, well, how did you go about that? Well, I wrote a book, I put it together, I published it on Amazon myself. <laughs> and so that uh, obviously there's going to be errors and there's going to be issues with it, but I did it alone. You know, it just it, yeah. it is what it is. I didn't have an editor. I didn't have anybody helping me out with it. Um, I just did it by myself. You know, it's like a um, passion project. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. And I am knee deep in writing another uh, edition of the Thomas Jordan novel series because <laughs> it's fun for me. You know, yeah. um, when you see me watching uh, or you see me post something about Magnum PI, and I'm watching <laughs> watching all those, I am. And by the way, I have the first three seasons sitting here on my desk next to me. I'll be bringing those down and dropping those off for the wedding, so you can uh, so you can start your Magnum PI collection <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and check that out. Um, and then a quick plug. So the next um, the next audio or, or not the next audio the next um, article that I want to post on Muscle and Speed and share to our social media is going to be on the um, car shows that I watch on TV. You know, there's so 20 years ago, they had the power block on Saturdays on spike TV. And that was it. There were no other car shows on television. Yeah, now they're everywhere. Now they're <laughs> everywhere. And so I want to share some of the ones that I watch, but you know, when I post these, it's not just to show what I watch. I want to know what you watch. And so if there's something I'm missing, tell me, I would love to check it out. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to get that up. <clears throat> and then later on, I want to do an article about uh, the YouTube channels that I follow that are car related. Um, because there's some really good ones on there. And I, um, I'd love to share them with, uh, with the folks. And um, you can see kind of what's out there. Um, and part of the reason for that is that when we're talking about this crap on our podcast... <laughs> I'd like you to know what we're talking about. So if I mention 1320 video or um, Mustang Lifestyle or Finnegan's Garage or Roadkill or whatever, um, you might have an idea of what we're talking about. Um, some of that's on TV and some of that's on YouTube. It's all good stuff, though. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and it's not something you have to watch every day, but. You know, I pay for Motor Trend on demand. It's five ninety nine a month or four ninety nine a month. I think it's four ninety nine. It's five or six bucks a month, whatever it is. Um, you get everything Netflix. on there. You get all <laughs> yeah. their originals. You get all the Discovery Channel shows. You get all the History Channel shows. You get to watch everything, and they cover racing events. So some of the stuff that's not widely uh, broadcast on television, like some of the SCCA, which to me is the greatest racing in the world. You want to talk about the greatest racing in the world? It's the GT, the SCCCA, uh, the old Trans Am series brought 
to modern day. So you have the Camaro, the Mustang, the Porsche, the BMW. Um, and then in the, um, in the uh, faster realms, you have the Ford GT, the Chevy Corvette, the, you know, they have all those on there. And, and it's amazing racing. You know, yeah. I, I know that road courses are harder to watch because you don't get to see the whole race. Unlike NASCAR, where you can sit in one spot and watch the entire race. <laughs> That's cool, and I get it. I still wish they used factory cars so stock car racing meant something again. <laughs> and I will, I will say that till the day I die. I don't care. <laughs> if they could take a body in white Mustang, Camaro, and Challenger, and whatever foreign cars want to be in it, I think Toyota's in it. Um, Toyota, put something together. Race the actual car. Yeah. The actual car. <laughs> I don't care. Race the actual car. So when I'm rooting for the Mustang, it's an actual Mustang. If I'm rooting for the Camaro, it's an yeah. actual Camaro. That is not how it yeah. is. No. That drives me insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a big, I'm a bigger fan of the uh, uh, the regular road courses. Anyways, I'm I'm not. I don't like to watch track racing. You like them to turn right and left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a weird thing though. You know, NASCAR kind of came on. Um, you know, everybody. I think everybody who would listen to this would know the history of NASCAR and the fact that it started with moonshine runners uh, once prohibition ended. Um, as a form of racing and developing the cars that they had when they were breaking the law, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> what a great history. <laughs> but somewhere around, you know, the late eighties, early nineties, they got away from actual factory cars and that sucks. And it's sucked ever since <laughs> in that way. I mean, the racing is still good. Don't get me wrong. You get uh, some talented drivers. You're driving four or five wide on some of those speedways, trying to drive 200 mile an hour on a track. That's insane. It is insane. Um, and I'm not trying to take away from that. It's just I wish they had factory cars. That's all. Me too. Race on Sunday, sell on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um. But yeah, the the old the old days of the SCCA Trans Am racing when the Boss 302s and the Z28 Camaros and uh, uh, American Motors had their AMX, um, Dodge was racing the Challenger in that series and the Barracuda. That's when the racing was at its pinnacle for me. That was was road course racing with American Iron. That's amazing. Now, you want to add some flair to that and have, say, the Jaguar F-Type, um, the Porsche 911, that's great. and things like that. And that That's uh, fine. Bring it on. <laughs> that's awesome. To me, it's all good. Um, I wish that we had that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't. You know, but um, I think there's a market for that. I think promoted properly, people could get behind it. You know, I think part of it was with NASCAR. It's hard to get behind a four door, or you know what I mean, the Taurus and the Impala. <laughs> it's just not that great. No, no, it's all <laughs> random looking cars. I mean, yes, there's an Impala SS and there's a Taurus show, and yes, they're high performance cars, and yes, they're fast, and probably both of them will blow the doors off my Cutlass. I don't care. No matter. It doesn't Your matter. Your car can drive through those cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's not the same, you know. No. And, um, those cars are not inspiring at all. Yeah, they're great commuter cars. They're great family cars. They do their job very well. Inspire absolutely nobody to do anything. <laughs> that's what i think maybe i'm wrong i don't well, think I'm so sure, i'm sure there'll be a debate you know because you, you do have that that fan base out there but to me it, it's all right yeah oh you like you said you want to know what you're rooting for right 
Yeah. And it's hard to get worked up over a Taurus. I could never get worked up over a Taurus. What is Do- Dodge, you serious, the Intrepid? So you had the Taurus, <laughs> the Intrepid, and the Impala. I almost fell asleep saying those three words. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how exciting that is. <laughs> yeah, well, no, and, then, and then you go back to the fact that it, it really has nothing to do with those cars. You know, these are tube chassis race cars with, uh, you know, fiberglass bodies over top that have stickers on them to resemble whatever it is they're trying to resemble. Whatever they're trying to make and that's money. still how it is. I don't like that. I, I I understand why they did it. I don't care. I don't like it. <laughs> that sucks. Well, that's funny. And, and I don't I don't know because I don't I don't get to watch a lot of these race shows, but there there are those pink slip races and stuff that they do show live. You know, it's like a reality show. Yeah. These guys with different different muscle cars that they're racing for pink slips. It's it's all it it's a lot better to me, anyways. Yeah. It's well, Street more- Outlaws, as silly as it sounds, Street Outlaws is the number one rated show on Discovery. You know, I told Tommy that, and he was like, what? Better than Deadliest Catch? And I was like, yeah, it is. It's the highest rated show they have. It beat out Fast and Loud, which was the old highest rated show, you know, that had beat out Deadliest Catch already. So, obviously, there's a huge market, um, market out there for these cars. You know, we're not the only ones holding up this hobby. <laughs> you know, Richard Rollins is what? I mean, he's like a multi-gajillionaire now for his hot rod shop, his uh, restaurants, and for the shows he's producing now with Discovery. That shows you that there's a huge appetite for this stuff. And... Um, where I think NASCAR and some of these other places failed is it's hard to get behind your car when it's not a real car. Yeah. You know, if I want to watch a manufactured race car race, F1 beats you all day long. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. faster. They're more exciting. They make cooler noises. <laughs> you know, give me a break. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> F1 beats the shit out of NASCAR. So it's not about that. It's what NASCAR used to have was the fact that it was the car you bought. Yeah. If uh Torino won Sunday and Kale Yarbrough standing outside of it hoisting a trophy, you could go buy a very similar car Monday morning from yeah. the Ford dealership. That's a big deal. When Richard Petty was winning all those championships, you could go get a Roadrunner. You could go get a Charger. You could go get those cars. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dale Earnhardt stands over his uh, Impala and hoists a trophy. That's not the same thing that you'd be buying on <laughs> at the Chevy dealership. Not even close. <laughs> So it's hard to inspire that brand loyalty and it's hard to inspire sales based on what is happening. And it used to be common knowledge. That was what they said. Race on Sunday, sell on Monday. How do you do that if you can't buy the car that you saw win? (laughs) When you wouldn't want to buy the car that you saw win. (laughs) No. (laughs) Or if you did, it wasn't because it was racing. It was because it was a cheap four-door that your kids yeah. fit in. <laughs> That's not the same thing. <laughs> you know, you lose your demographic a little bit there, but I don't know. So here's what I wanted to say. We're back, right? I said it when we started. We're back. Muscle We're back. and Speed is going to be doing podcasts again weekly i hope <laughs> we're back um i hope to have tommy back um will i feel like you're on board we'll get her done yeah <laughs> so um happy mother's day we came back on mother's day i'm gonna get this posted right away so it will be on mother's day it's 11 o'clock right now so i gotta hurry <laughs> but uh yeah if you got them drive them Drive them. Drive them. Yeah. 
All right, we're out of here. All right, we're out.